Okay, I think we're good to go now. So this is the last example you can't see. PC. I do not like this notation. I like the lib, I can't say the name. Libsnets, Leibnets, I can't say that, but <laughs> I like that notation better, the primes. So this is gonna be x double prime plus y double prime equal to t squared. And this one is going to be x double prime minus y double prime equal to 4t. Okay. And so then we have this system and we've got to solve it, right? So the first step to do is to create our Laplace transforms, right? Once we have our Laplace transforms, then we can set them up the way we like with the LX's, the LY's, and then everything else on the other side so that we could start doing the elimination process, okay? But let's first get through that Laplace part. So here I'm gonna Laplace each term, and I'm not even gonna write it, I'm just gonna do it, okay? So when I Laplace X double prime, I get S squared Laplace of X minus S times X of zero minus X prime of zero. When I Laplace this term, it's very similar just with y's, right? So I have s squared Laplace of y minus s y of zero minus y prime of zero and then equal to t squared. So this is just the first equation. I haven't got to the second equation just yet. I'm gonna manipulate this until I'm finished, okay? So this is going to stay there. What is x of 0? What is x of 0? 8. And what is x prime of 0? Zero? 0. And then what is y of 0? zero and then y prime of zero zero oops and I forgot I Laplace all of the left hand side I also have to Laplace the right hand side right all right now I'm just gonna leave it like this but on my next step I am gonna actually Laplace it okay so if I Laplace t squared remember the formula you get that power factorial over s that power plus one from the formulas Right? That's the formula for t to any power. Okay. So I'm going to obviously not have a term here, here, or here because of the zeros. But we are going to have this 8s here. So I'm going to have s squared Laplace of x minus 8s plus s squared Laplace of y equal to 2 over s cubed. Okay. Now, remember the strategy. We need to get the Laplace of X and Laplace of Y on the left-hand side. Everything else needs to go to the right-hand side, right? So this 8S is gonna have to move over. So if I add 8S to both sides, we're gonna get S squared Laplace of X plus S squared Laplace of Y equal to, and from here it's your choice. You can keep them separated fractions or you can put them together. Um, I'm pretty sure that when I eliminate stuff, I'm probably going to end up having to divide by some s squareds, right? So there's going to be more than just this s cubed down here and more than just any whatever it is down here. So you could put them together. Again, it's your choice. It doesn't matter. You can figure out how to manipulate it later if you wanted to, okay? So I'm just going to leave it like that. Then now I'm going to do the second one. So this is going to be what I label my DE1. So this is what I'm going to use when I create my system. Okay? And that's what I'm going to use when I start trying to eliminate the L of X's or the L of Y's. But that's only the first guy, right? All that algebra, we got only the first guy. So we got to do the same thing to the second guy. You have to be careful here, though. You'll still get this 
for the Laplace of x prime or x double prime and you'll still get this for the Laplace of y double prime. The only thing is, and you do have to Laplace the right hand side as well, what sign is in the middle between the Laplace of x double prime and the Laplace of y double prime? What sign is in between these two guys? A minus. So that minus has to apply to all of that definition for the Laplace of y double prime, okay? Now we already know that the y of zero is gonna be zero, the y prime of zero is gonna be zero, and which of these is gonna be zero? The x prime, right? x prime is gonna be zero, okay? So we know we're not gonna have to worry about that. So really the minus just needs to be carried over to this term. Okay, so we have s squared Laplace of x minus 8s, because that's 8 times s, right? Minus s squared Laplace of y equal to Laplace of 4t. Okay, so, oh wait, I need to actually do the Laplace of 4t. What is the Laplace of t? Because I can take the 4 out. What is the Laplace of t? It's the same thing as before, right? Yes. Go ahead. It's 1. Oh, thank you. No, it's not 1. Nope. It's 1 factorial over s 1 plus 1. Just like we did with the t squared, right? Okay, so really, and I'm gonna actually add this 8s over as well, and I'll mess with that fraction in a minute. So I get s squared L of x minus s squared L of y equal to, well one factorial is just one, right? Times four is four. So I have s squared down here, and then my 8s. So this is my DE2. It's already ready to go. I've got my L of X's, my L of Y's, and then everything else, all the other junk is on the other side, right? So now you've got to look at those two DE's. Those are the ones you want to concentrate on to eliminate variables, right? So looking at it, which one would automatically eliminate if I just combined them? I didn't manipulate at all. The L of Y's, right? because you've got positive s squared L of y, and here you have negative s squared L of y. If it helps you to see it, rewrite that one underneath, right? Um, I am gonna do that just because I'm gonna have to combine what's on the right-hand sides as well, and that helps if I see them next to each other. So I have two over s cubed plus eight s. So if I add these together, I'm gonna get two s squared, L of X. These are going to wipe each other out and then I'm going to have 4 over S squared plus 2 over S cubed plus how many S's? 16, 16 S's. Okay. But I'm not done because I have to have the L of X all by itself before I can Laplace inverse, right? So I need to divide everybody by this 2s squared. So essentially what that does is it puts a 2s squared down underneath every single term. Okay? So that means the Laplace of x will equal 4 over 2s to what power? 4. 4. Here we have 2 over 2s to what power? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here we have 16s over 2s just squared because there was nothing down there before. And then I'll fix it. If you do these two steps in one, it's fine. I'm just doing them so we see where everything came from. Oh, the twos would cancel, right? So I would have one over s to the fifth. Here, those would reduce, and so would the s's. So I end up with this, okay? Now I am gonna Laplace inverse. When I Laplace inverse, this is going to become just x, right? 
But over here, I'm going to take the 2 out and I'm going to Laplace inverse 1 over s to the 4th. I don't really need to take anything out because it's already just a 1, right? And then here, I'm going to take out the 8 and this is going to be 1 over s. Okay. Now the last term, I already know what it's going to be. It's just going to be the constant 1, right? But the other two, they're going to be t's. But in order for me to figure out what the um, coefficient is going to be, and in order for me to figure out what the power is going to be, I need to manipulate them so that they look like that formula, okay? So I'm going to manipulate here on my next step. So I'm going to have to have s3 plus 1, which means I need a 3 factorial up top. And if I put a 3 factorial up top, I need to put one downstairs as well. Here I don't really have anything in front, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to put something at the bottom because that's a high exponent. So I'm going to have 5, nope, 4 plus 1, right? Makes 5. <laughs> which means I should have a 4 factorial at the top which means I need to have a 4 factorial at the bottom to keep this line equivalent to the previous line, right? And then the other one is already good to go. I didn't have to do anything to that one. Okay, now it's ready. So remember, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, right? Won't the 2's cancel in that product? So I'm just going to end up with 1 third t to the third. Plus, here it's one, it's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which means 24 t to the 4th power. And this is just 8 times a big fat 1, so it's just 8. So that's half of my answer. That's not my complete answer, right? Your equation had x's and y's, right? So we do have to go again and continue. I'm going to grab another sheet of paper. It's a different color, but we're going to continue. So I'm going to go back to my DEs. They're right here, right above each other, right? They weren't manipulated. Okay. We literally just took the one up here and rewrote it underneath the second one. Okay. So I'm going to scoop my paper up and just focus on these two. Forget the plus and forget my label. Just look at these two equations. Okay. What would I have to do to those equations to eliminate the X now? so that all I have left is y. Look at their coefficients. They're almost ready, right? They both have s squared, but in order for the LLSs to cancel, one of them has to be what? Negative. One of them has to be negative, which means I'm going to have to multiply one of these equations by a negative. You could choose whichever one you want. I am going to choose the top one, only so that I can turn that guy into a plus, right? And I'll have negatives all over the place, OK? I'd rather have a negative in my denominator than, I mean a positive in my denominator than a negative in my denominator at the end, okay? So I'm going to take the top one and multiply it by a negative. So the top one will become negative s squared L of x. This term will become positive s squared L of y. And then this will become negative 4 over s squared and this will become minus 8s. Okay, now the second one, I'm going to rewrite it exactly as it is. So s squared L of x. Let me just write it without saying everything. Okay, now I'm going to take this and push it up a little bit more. Good. 2 over x, x s cubed needs to be negative. No. I did not multiply the bottom one by anything. I just kept it exactly the same. Okay. So now when I combine them, these are going to wipe each other out, right? How many of this terms am I going to end up with? Two. Two of these guys. And then I'm going to end up, I'm going to put the positive fraction, because those are not like terms, right? But I'm going to put the positive fraction in front and the negative fraction in back, just a preference. You don't have to. You could have put negative 4s squared plus 2s cubed, right? But what happens to these guys? 
they also cancel. So I don't have any 8s's or 16s's or anything like that anymore. Okay? And we gotta do the same thing. Get the L of Y by itself before you Laplace inverse. Okay? So if I divide everybody by 2s squared, that's gonna be s to the fifth down here. And s to the fourth down there. So that's 1 over s to the fifth minus 2 over s to the fourth. Now when I Laplace inverse to figure out y, this will just be y, but I'll have Laplace inverse of this minus 2 Laplace inverse of this. But it's not ready yet, right? We have to figure out what factorials we need so we can know what exponent of t we're going to end up with. So let's manipulate this. This will be s to the 4 plus 1, which means what factorial do I need at the top? Mm -hmm. 4 factorial, which means 4 factorial also goes down there. Over here, this is 3 plus 1, which means I need 3 factorial and 3 factorial. So this is 1 over 24 t to the 4th power minus 1 over 3 t to the third power. And now I have y. And so that's my answer. My answer to the DE, these two functions satisfy that system of equations. So basically, if I were to take the double prime of each one and add them together, I should get t squared. If I take the double prime of both of them and I subtract this double prime from that double prime, I should get 4t. That's what this said, right? If I take this guy double prime, this guy's double prime, and I add them, I should get t squared. Take his double prime minus his double prime, I should get 4t. Okay? So those two equations are the equations that solve the DE. Okay? Let me give you a second to finish writing that if you're still scribbling it down. I am going to stop this video here. I'll continue with another one in a little bit. Okay?